From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Friday, June 24th, 2022. Cloud email threats soar 101% in a year. Trend Micro announced this number as their observation of growth in email borne cyber threats that they blocked last year. They also noted a 138% year-on-year increase in phishing emails, of which almost half were credential phishing attempts. They also blocked 3.3 million malicious files in cloud-based emails, including a 134% increase in known threats and a 221% increase in unknown malware. Another security company, Proofpoint, warned in a new report of the continued dangers posed by social engineering, highlighting how many users don't realize that threat actors may spend considerable time and effort building a rapport over email with their victims, especially if they're trying to conduct a business email compromise attack. The NHS warns of scam COVID-19 text messages still. The UK's National Health Service is warning the public about a spate of fake messages sent out as SMS text messages fraudulently telling recipients of their exposure to the Omicron variant of COVID-19. The link leads to a look-alike website that pretends to belong to the NHS. This bogus website confirms that the test is free but asks for 99 pence to cover postage. Its true mission, however, is to collect personal information including names and addresses. The fact that this is being reported in mid-June 2022 shows that COVID-related scams are still successful. Fancy Bear uses nuke threat to exploit one-click bug. APT group Fancy Bear is behind a phishing campaign that uses the specter of nuclear war to exploit a known one-click Microsoft flaw. The goal is to deliver malware that can steal credentials from the Chrome, Firefox and Edge browsers. Researchers at Malwarebytes state that the group is pushing malicious documents weaponized with the exploit for Felina. Their campaign targets users with emails carrying a malicious RTF file called Nuclear Terrorism, a very real threat, in an attempt to prey on victims' fears that the invasion of Ukraine will escalate into a nuclear conflict. Chinese hackers distributing SMS bomber tool with malware hidden inside. Israeli cybersecurity company Checkpoint said in a report that they had found a threat cluster tied to the hacking group Tropic Trooper using a previously undocumented malware coded in the NIM language. The novel malware, dubbed NIMDA, is bundled with a Chinese-language greyware SMS bomber tool that's most likely illegally distributed in the Chinese-speaking web. This is being used to strike targets as part of a newly discovered campaign. An SMS bomber is a technique which, as the name mentions, renders a phone number unusable via a barrage of DDoS requests. And now, thanks to today's episode sponsor, Optiv. Modernizing your identity control plane from AD to the cloud is complex. Ralph Martino, who is leading the Identity and Access Management IAM group for Optiv, discusses what challenges CISOs are facing in today's ever-changing climate. These include increasing security, decreasing risk, and lowering cost. You can learn more at optiv.com slash IAM hyphen Microsoft. That is O-P-T-I-V dot com slash IAM hyphen Microsoft. New MetaMask phishing campaign uses KYC lures to steal passphrases. A new phishing campaign targets users on Microsoft 365 by spoofing the popular MetaMask cryptocurrency wallet provider and attempting to steal recovery phrases. According to email security firm ArmorBlocks, the new campaign distributes messages that resemble legitimate identity verification requests. They appear to be sent from MetaMask support and are spoofs of a Know Your Customer KYC verification request and features convincing branding and no typos or other obvious scam giveaways. KYC requests are part of standard anti-money laundering legal obligations that financial companies must abide by, so receiving one would not necessarily be unusual. Critical PHP vulnerability exposes QNAP NAS devices to more remote attacks. QNAP, the Taiwanese maker of network-attached storage devices, said on Wednesday it is in the process of fixing a critical three-year-old PHP vulnerability that could be abused to achieve remote code execution. A vulnerability affects PHP versions in the 7.1 and 7.2 range, and it is tracked as CVE 2019-11043 rated 9.8 out of 10 on the CVSS scale. 
This alert comes a week after QNAP revealed that it is thoroughly investigating yet another wave of deadbolt ransomware attacks targeting QNAP NAS devices running outdated versions of QTS 4.x. Microsoft has AI that can spot ransomware attacks before they happen. Microsoft is focusing on disrupting the earliest stages of a ransomware attack with AI enhancements for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. In what the company calls early incrimination, they are developing machine learning algorithms to determine malicious intent in files, processes, user accounts and devices. Microsoft engineers have developed three sets of AI-generated inputs that independently generate a risk score determining whether an entity is likely involved in an active ransomware attack. These are time-based and statistical analysis of security alerts at the organizational level, graph-based aggregation of suspicious events across devices, and device-based monitoring to flag suspicious activities. By correlating these datasets, Defender can detect patterns and connections that might have been missed otherwise. If a high enough confidence level is reached, it automatically blocks the files and entities involved in the ransomware. Amazon's Alexa could turn dead loved ones' voices into digital assistant. Claiming it will allow people to, quote, make the memories last, end quote, the company is developing technology that will allow its Alexa digital assistant to mimic the voice of anyone it hears from less than a minute of provided audio. This according to Rohit Prasad, senior vice president and head scientist, speaking on Wednesday. He added that during the coronavirus pandemic, quote, so many of us have lost someone we love, end quote. They announced the existence of this technology from beyond the grave at the company's ReMars conference, focusing on its ambient computing achievements in the realms of machine learning, automation, robots, and space. Just a reminder, there will be no Super Cyber Friday next Friday because we're doing it on Tuesday instead. So join us for the Super Cyber Friday Tuesday edition on June 28th at 2.45 p.m. Eastern during Living Security's Breaking Security Awareness virtual conference. Our title will be Hacking the Boardroom, How CISOs and Security Program Owners Can Better Approach and Get More Buy-In from the Board. Users can go to livingsecurity.com and click at the top of the screen to register. Super Cyber Friday will return to its regular schedule on Friday, July 8th, where the topic will be Hacking Security Reporting, an hour of critical thinking about producing, reading, responding, and repeating the process of understanding your security posture. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines. 